Hey guys, it's MKXJump here, and with Anniversary fast approaching, I thought I should probably make a video that's going to help you work out whether these new heroes are going to be right for you. I could easily just make a tier list or a review video and say, yes, get this hero, but that doesn't really cover the bigger picture. In Idle Heroes, there's a big overarching term that you'll hear said many times, and it's called synergy. Synergy is how well or not heroes interact with one another, and if you maximise your synergy, you can see a team do very, very well on the battlefield. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Before we get into today's video though, I'd love to give a shout out to the massive influx of people that have decided to back me on Patreon. We've got Charlie, Boric McTeague, Dan Turner, Austin Blazingame, Jason Boaty, and Hans Gruber. Thank you to all of you people that have decided to back me on Patreon, and if you want to be like them and help support me with the content I make, you can find a link in the description or up there in the top corner of the screen. Anyway guys, let's talk about Synergy. Synergy. What does it mean? Well, according to Google, synergy is the interaction or cooperation of two or more organizations, substances, or other agents to produce a combined effect greater than the sum of their separate effects. What this basically means is it's the way that two things work together to achieve something which they wouldn't otherwise be able to achieve on their own. So in Idle Heroes, what we're looking for is two or more heroes that work so well together, the results they give you are stronger than what they would be able to do on their own. To better understand synergy, I'm going to break it down into three categories. The first is direct synergy, where the positive relationship between two heroes is exceptionally obvious and apparent just from how their skills interact. The second is indirect synergy, which requires a better understanding of the game and the simple game mechanics to understand how to maximize and take advantage of the abilities that heroes have. And finally, counter synergy. This is where heroes do the opposite from synergize and they actually work against each other and the ends they're trying to achieve. The first example of synergy that I'm going to bring up is an example of direct synergy, which comes from 2018, before E3 was even a thing. Back in the 10 star meta, Ice Blink and Corpse Demon used to be a classic combination, and it was a really, really commonly seen team. Corpse Demon has a 70% chance to freeze enemies with his active skill if they're on the front line. Also, he has a chance to freeze enemies when he takes damage. Ice Blink, on the other hand, deals more damage against frozen enemies. So Ice Blink's passive skill, which says he deals more damage to frozen enemies, has a direct synergy with Corpse Demon because he freezes opponents. So the more frozen opponents you have, the more damage Ice Blink will do. And therefore, the synergy should be obvious. Another example of direct synergy can be found in the hero Scary. This is still used on PvE teams today. What Scary can do is he delivers marks to opponents that increase the damage done by Scary. Therefore, one copy of Scary is delivering one lot of buffs that enhance the damage done by that single copy of Scary. If you have two copies of Scary, they'll both benefit from these buffs, but also by having two copies, you're doubling the amount of buffs given to the opponents. The more Scaries you have, the more buffs that are given, and therefore the more copies of Scary you have that benefit from these buffs, and therefore the damage you deal is exponentially increased the more copies of Scary you have. Hopefully this is a very obvious and clear example of direct synergy. The final direct synergy I'm going to discuss can be found in heroes such as Mim, Starlight and Aiden. These heroes benefit when other heroes die. Therefore, a hero that can die easily is a hero that will directly synergize with any of these heroes. Heroes that are low level, heroes that you don't want to give equipment to, or heroes that just quite frankly die easily because you haven't given them guild tech, all synergize with this. And that's why people often consider this a cheesy tactic, because it doesn't require much effort to have a hero that can die easily. However, there is a way of going one step further. Heroes such as Sleepless and Michelle resurrect after dying, and therefore die twice, so give you twice the benefit. Heroes such as Destroyer have passive skills that trigger when they die, and therefore also provide a benefit to these heroes. You have to consider what a hero will do when they die rather than just dying to really get the most out of this synergy. And therefore, we're starting to get into the realm of indirect synergies, heroes that do a little bit extra that might not seem obviously apparent. Look at Destroyer, for example. When he dies, he increases the attack of all of your remaining heroes. Therefore, a hero like Mim, who deals damage to opponents when other heroes die, will deal more damage because Destroyer has buffed his attack. The heroes such as Michelle will resurrect after she dies, therefore she will proc Mim's passive skill twice because she'll die, resurrect, and then die again. 
Therefore, you have to look at how heroes' passive skills and active skills interact with these abilities and additional niches in the game, and it's often good to discuss with people and work out what different synergies are out there that you can take advantage of. Direct synergy is obvious. All you have to do is read a hero's abilities and work out for yourself what heroes are going to provide a benefit that'll improve this. When a hero says, I'll deal more damage to frozen enemies, you just have to find someone that can freeze opponents. When a hero says, I'll deal damage when heroes die, all you have to do is find a hero that's going to die easily or multiple times. It's pretty obvious and pretty easy to do. So when these new heroes come out, hopefully they'll have some direct synergistic abilities that we can take advantage of. But that's not the only way heroes synergize. Indirect synergy requires a little bit more knowledge of the game. Let's take Garuda for example. She has a passive skill that deals damage to opponents after they've been attacked by another one of your heroes. Therefore, she indirectly synergizes with heroes whose active skills and basic attacks hit more opponents, because the more opponents they hit means the more opponents that Garuda's going to hit with her passive skill. In addition, her passive skill scales with attack, but because it's only a passive skill, it cannot benefit from crit and does not crit against opponents. Therefore, any boosts to crit that you're giving Garuda will not improve this passive skill. So how do we improve our damage? Well, look at Holy Damage. Holy Damage increases the damage done by a hero's attack stat by 70%, and this damage will also ignore armor. So a Holy Damage buff does benefit her passive skills. So someone like Gurk, who improves the Holy Damage of the heroes on your team, has an indirect synergy with Garuda because Garuda's passive skill doesn't benefit from crit, therefore we need something else to boost, such as the Holy Damage. Therefore, using a Gurk works really well with Garuda, especially in PvE. Another example of indirect synergy, which isn't so relevant anymore, can be seen with Dark Arthandol. When Dark Arthandol takes damage, she buffs her stats. Therefore, the more damage a Dark Arthandol takes, the more damage she'll be dealing to your opponents. If you run her with a hero that can heal, Dark Arthandol benefits from this multiple ways. Not only does the healer keep her alive, but because like any hero she has a finite amount of HP, the healing means she can take more damage and therefore, in return, deal more damage back to the opponents. Hence, running a healer alongside Dark Arthandol was a really powerful way to get the most out of her damage. But that didn't last forever. Amun-Ra came out, and Amun-Ra was able to transform damage into healing, which meant massive burst damage from heroes such as Dark Arthandol was completely mitigated and turned into healing against the opponent. And this became a really strong counter. And counters can't just be found on the opposing teams to stop your heroes from doing well, you can accidentally counter yourself. And that's where we're going to start talking about counter synergy. Counter synergy is by far the most important part of this video. When people build teams, they don't realize that their heroes they're using aren't working well together. For example, let's say you're using a hero like Mim, to go back to one of our earlier examples. If you're running a bunch of heroes that do not want to die and are really stubborn HP Garudas given the golden crown so that they cannot die, they are not going to synergize well with your Mim, because Mim benefits when heroes die. If your Garudas are sitting there and not dying, then unfortunately, guys, your Mim isn't going to do the most damage he could be doing. Sure, he's going to get some passives off when the opponents die, but he isn't going to be seeing the fantastic performance you could expect from him on other teams such as secondary teams in Interdimensional Arena. And therefore, counter synergy is something worth considering. One big example of counter synergy, which is often overlooked, is CC and reactionary heroes. A reactionary hero such as King Barton will attack back when he takes damage. However, King Barton can stun opponents. And that's a bit weird. A hero that can stun stops opponents from attacking himself and therefore reduces the amount of counterattacks he's going to be doing. And one part of the argument can say, hey MK, but stunning opponents is good because it stops them from doing stuff. But with a hero like King Barton who deals consistent damage by getting hit, it can be quite detrimental. The less opponents hitting you, the less counterattacks King Barton is doing, and therefore the less damage he's going to deal to opponents. And awkwardly, they kind of made this a little strange by giving a hero such as King Barton more damage against stunned opponents, which I guess kind of countered this, but the more stunned the opponents are, are, the less of them are going to attack you and therefore the less benefits you're going to get. Another example of counter synergy can be seen with Cthuga. 
Cthulhu removes burn and bleed, but there's a cap on how much damage this removal can do. Therefore, heroes that deal a lot of burn and bleed damage over a broad amount of time can actually get their damage removed by Cthulhu because of his active skill. Now, this doesn't mean his active skill is bad, but it transforms that burn and bleed damage into burst. So on one hand, burn and bleed synergizes really well with Cthulhu, but if you have too much burn and bleed, Cthulhu is going to remove it all and actually be a detriment to your team. One example of this can be seen with Phoenix, because Cthulhu has a chance to remove the burn off of opponents, which means the benefit your heroes are getting for dealing more damage against burning opponents is going to disappear because Cthulhu has removed that burn. Therefore, you really need to be careful when building your teams, because different effects like this can really negatively affect each other. Another example is Unimax. Unimax's taunt forces heroes to attack him. So again, looking at a hero such as Cthulhu or Horus who benefits from getting hit, running them alongside a Unimax isn't a very good idea. Unimax is going to be taking all of the attention with his taunt and therefore heroes such as Horus and Cthulhu aren't going to be getting hit as much as you'd like and thus do less damage, which isn't what you want from your heroes. You don't want to be running a hero alongside them which is going to decrease the amount of damage they're doing. Therefore, you need to be very careful when building your team because counter synergy is a very real thing. Often, another thing I find is people run too many support heroes. And actually, support heroes are great because they synergize with your attack dealing heroes. But if you haven't got anyone to boost the attack with, what's the point of having a support hero if there's no one there to support? Often, people will look at a tier list and see someone like Bell Rain high up and go, Ooh, I'm going to build Bell Rain as my first E3 hero. First of all, that's absolutely nuts that you're trying to build a light hero as your first hero, but hey, let's just ignore that. If you actually do manage to get a Bell Rain as your first hero, you will be sorely disappointed because Bell Rain is a hero that makes your other heroes good. If you have no other heroes to benefit from Bell Rain, the Bell Rain is going to be absolutely useless. So you really need to be careful when following tier lists and other guides because actually how you build your team matters more than the heroes you choose to run on that team. Look at Delacium, okay? He's a hero who is fast becoming a big fan favourite because of the massive damage he's capable of dealing in PvE. But Delacium deals more damage for the number of negative effects the opponent has already on them. Therefore, when you're building a team with Delacium, you really need to consider the amount of negative debuffs, whether it's burn, bleed, poison, attack reduction, precision reduction, it doesn't matter. You've got to have that in your team, because if you don't, Delacium will deal significantly less damage. Therefore, Delacium provides the best case study when considering indirect, direct, and counter synergy. This is because Delacium has so much of that going on in his skills. First of all, the more negative effects you have on an opponent will indirectly benefit Delacium. As well, if you can stun and burn opponents, Delacium can increase the duration of these with his passive skill, and that there is a direct synergy with Delacium's passive. If you're running heroes that don't offer any of these benefits and therefore have no negative effects on the opponents, you're counter synergizing with Delacium because you're not getting the most out of his skill set. So often, many of you will be sat there at home going, well, how do I build my Delacium team? The answer is simple. Have as many negative effects, whether they're burn, bleed, stun, petrify, whether it's attack reduction, crit reduction, it doesn't matter. Have as much as that as you can on the opponents to overall increase the damage done by Delacium. As well, you're going to want heroes that can increase his flat damage anyway. Holy damage increases, crit increases, attack increases from heroes such as Bell Rain. All of these things will benefit. If you can find a hero that can not only improve Delacium's performance, but also negatively affect the opponent, you're on for a massive win. So let's look at someone like Olivia. Olivia shrinks opponents. That's a negative effect they have. Shrinking also increases the damage they take, which is brilliant. Therefore, Delacium will deal even more damage. Also, Olivia's shrink means the opponent, the trunk, will deal less damage, and therefore is going to hurt your team less, and this provides great support. Also, Delacium's passive skill can increase the duration of negative abilities and spread them out across opponents. So let's say he goes for shrink and spreads that out across the opponents, shrinking multiple of them. Even more synergy is happening there. So when it comes to building a team with someone like Delacium, you have to look at the negative effects that you've got floating around and make sure that Delacium can capitalize on these and make the most out of not only his entire build, but also the build for the other heroes on your team. To finish up, let's talk about something called Empty Synergy. 
and this is the illusion of thinking you have synergy when really you don't. Let's look at a Sigmund, who can strip away armor from opponents. And let's look at an artifact like Kiss of Ghost, which has 100% armor break. 100% armor break ignores armor. Brilliant. Give that to a Garuda, she's going to be ignoring armor and popping off damage numbers like no tomorrow. Running a Sigmund in there will synergize with, let's say you're running the Phoenix pet and you'll go, ooh, I'm dealing more overall damage. That's great. However, the armor stripping effect of Sigmund is not going to synergize with Garuda because Garuda already doesn't care about armor because of Kiss of Ghost. Therefore, if you were getting really panicky and running a hero like Lutz, for example, to remove armor from an opponent, Garuda's not going to benefit from a hero like that because she's already got 100% armor reduction from Kiss of Ghost. And actually, a lot of people you'll see run armor break and attack attack stones on some of their PvE heroes, but also for some reason run armor reduction heroes as well. If you're going down the armor break attack attack route, you probably don't need armor reduction because armor break is already doing a great job to get past the armor. Reducing the armor isn't going to be as beneficial with the armor break that's sitting around. Sure, these two skills aren't the same, but they do have very similar effects in that they help you to mitigate armor. So, if you're trying to capitalize on too much of one thing, you can find that actually you're going too far and not benefiting to the fullest. One great example of this that I mentioned before as well is CC. If you've got heroes that want to react to taking damage and you're spending all your time CCing opponents, you're not going to get that benefit and you'll probably lose. And you just got to think about things like this with your team because often something might seem really good, but actually when you run it alongside another hero, it isn't that good. As well, Let's look at a hero like Olivia. On her own, she doesn't seem like a great hero, but alongside heroes such as Delacium or really, really tanky Garudas, she can do really well. So at the end of the day, some heroes might not look that good and actually might not be that high on a tier list, but when coupled alongside other heroes, they do really, really well. And this is true for early game or end game. It doesn't matter what stage you're in. Often people will ask me, hey MK, what heroes should I have? And they've only got a few nine stars. And I look and think, you know what? You need a five star heart watcher in that PVE team because the synergy she provides just from her buffs alone is going to be way better than running a hero that's nine star. Often a counter argument is, yeah, but she's only five star. And I'm like, yeah, but look at your damage numbers now. You've added that heart watcher in. The damage you're getting is way higher. And often it doesn't take a genius. All you have to do is read a hero's skills and go, well, actually, yeah, look. When Rosa takes half damage, he's given me a little buff. Why not stick a five star in there to help make my stronger heroes even better? So look for that, guys. Try find little synergistic patterns. And if you've got any little synergy things that you think's quite cool, why don't you drop them down in the comment section? I'd love to hear them. Let's get a big chat going because there's so many different things in Idle Heroes that work really well for synergy. And it's actually hard to talk about them all in one video. So I'd love to see your thoughts in the comments. And if I missed anything, if you even think I got something a little bit wrong, why not also drop a comment down below? If you've enjoyed this, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Hit that like button if you liked it. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike button. And of course, guys, if you want to catch some more of my content, you can find it over here on the side of the screen. Don't forget, if you want to help support me, you can back me on Patreon and make sure to join us all next week for all the great content that's coming with Anniversary on twitch.tv forward slash mkxjump. Have a great week, guys, and happy idling.